Okay, so let, let's talk about some of those um, because when I look at this, the cancer cluster studies near cell towers, okay, mm-hmm. they say, you know, they always talk about you've got cancer clusters near cell towers, mm-hmm. but it's rare that they define what that distance. And then I found a study, it's called the NILA study, concluded that the risk of newly developing cancer was three times higher among those patients who had lived during the past 10 years within a distance of 400 meters from a cellular transmitter. Right. In comparison to those that had lived far away. Well, what's far away? This is the other thing that's driving me nuts. Can somebody give me, can you give me some clear, what's the distance, what's the minimum distance you should be from a cell tower? Well, most of the studies are showing three to 400 meters. That's what they're documenting for cancers and for symptoms of electrosensitivity. Um, so I, I think that's probably fairly good. If you want to be on the safe side, probably 500 meters would be the best um, estimate. Uh, but beyond 500 that, meters 500 meters tower. from a cell tower, that's right. When it comes to broadcast towers like radio and television, do you remember we talked about them right at the beginning? And we know yeah. that they're not at microwave frequencies, they're at lower frequencies, but they're more powerful. And so the um, distance from those is anywhere from 2 to 4 kilometers So if you're near a broadcast antenna for a TV station or a radio station, then ideally you should be between, we should be at least uh, four kilometers away. And that's what the studies are showing. And when you say, you say, we discussed the difference between the frequency, when you say they're more powerful, are you talking about voltage? No, I'm talking about wattage. The wattage is the the power that they have. The more powerful they are, the greater area they can reach. Oh, okay. Right, so you have some radio stations that can do, you know, they spread out in, you know, from Ontario to to the uh, United States, and then some are local. You know, they service a, a community, so they don't have the same amount of power, the wattage, uh, for their station. And then, how about power lines? You know, like the great big ones. Yeah, there there we're concerned primarily about the voltage. As they're called um, high voltage transmission lines, so they. The higher the voltage, the higher the electric field, and the more current they carry, the thicker the wires or the more wires they are, the higher the magnetic field. So it's those two things we're, we're most concerned about. And so what would be the safe distance that you would need to be away from those? Um, for them, I'm trying to remember, um, it, it depends to... Uh, it, you know, it's interesting. Most people think the high voltage transmission lines are the ones we should avoid, but the ones on your street have very high magnetic fields sometimes. So their voltage is, their electric field is low, but their magnetic field is high. And, you know, if you're on a street and you're 20, 30 meters away, you're probably being exposed to an elevated magnetic field. Um, and that comes into your home. Unlike the electric field that doesn't, it's, it's blocked by, by the brick and mortar and windows and everything else. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, so the electric field is just outside, but the magnetic field penetrates. And um, I'm trying to think, I think it's about 100 meters, at least 100 meters away, um, you get very close to background levels. From the big power lines? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the street? From the big power lines. Oh, okay, so the big power lines are a lot less dangerous than I thought they were. It's the electric field that's a problem with them. So if you're outside, you're going to be exposed to very high electric field. As a matter of fact, right. some of these lines will light up a fluorescent tube. There's enough electricity to excite the molecules in a fluorescent tube. And you can have you go stand tube. there with a fluorescent tube. Oh, yeah. You hold up a tube and it'll light up. Oh, my Lord. Well, that's yeah. a good test. Yeah. <laughs> that's an easy test. Because around here, we a lot of these people, they've got them in their fields. And their house is sitting underneath, and their oh. cows are in the field nearby. Yeah, yeah. Cows tend to abort um, uh, when they when they're near power lines, uh, or they don't take. They have real problems with reproduction. Some of them have. Well, don't don't all these different sources of of both electric and magnetic radiation don't they really depress milk production in cows as well? Yes, yes, they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, they cause egg embryos to mutate, and they're causing all kinds of damage to the animals, aren't they? They are, and the vets are telling me that more and more animals um, are coming down with cancers in cities compared to countries where you're close to the power lines than you would be out in the country environment. So there's an increased um, incidence of, of cancers and pets that live near power lines. So 
so that brings me to another question. So from an electromagnetic perspective, mm-hmm. is it going to be safer to live in a city where, let's say, you're the safe, you're, the distances we just talked or talked about from the cell tower, from the radio TV, from the power lines, you're a safe distance away from all those sources, mm-hmm. or in the country, but let's say you've got a humongous cell tower out there because it has to reach, you know, a much um, a bigger area. Right. Because they, if you're in the country, don't they gen, then really up? That's right. The more powerful? Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's right. So well, where would you be safer? Well, the safest, the, the, the best way to find out is what to measure what you're exposed to. That's the best way. You know, we can guess as to, you know, um, uh, what you'd be exposed to, but the best thing to do is actually measure it. It also depends on how much metal is around you. So if you're in an office and you have a metal filing cabinet, metal re- reflects this radiation. So you can get a double whammy if it's coming through your window and then it's bouncing off a metal filing cabinet. That's why right. it's so important to measure this. Too many things that affect the your actual exposure. So distance alone is just a it's a poor surrogate. It's one surrogate that you can use, but it's not it's not great by itself. And then one thing came to my mind before when you were talking about putting the protective film on the windows if your neighbors have Wi-Fi or if you're near a cell tower. Is that going to cut it enough? Because can't that, can't the cell and, and, oh, I'm not sure about the cell, but I think the Wi-Fi radiation comes in through the walls, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it'll come in through the walls. More more of it will come through a window than through a wall. It depends what what your walls are made of. Um, So it will only reduce it. It won't eliminate it. Um, Right. That's why some people sleep under this canopy, so they eliminate it. They, you know, eliminate their exposure for the eight hours they're in bed at night. But then I've also heard you have to be careful. You still, you have to put your canopy up and then you have to remeasure because if you've got something coming from under the floor. Oh, you've got to put it under your floor. You're totally boxed in. It's like ah. building a par- 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 uh, Faraday cage for yourself, basically. Gotcha. So you have to be totally boxed in. If you have something coming up under the floor, it'll magnify within this canopy. Right. Yeah. So you just box in the whole thing. You know, that might be something that, you know, might be a good idea to do anyway for everybody. Mm-hmm. Just as, I mean, have you done that with your bed? No, I'm in a very clean environment. Um, there's no cell towers near me. 